Hey everyone, Flanky here from Old Tank Guys Discord, and I thought I'd do a quick video on scouting. Now, scouting is an aspect of War Thunder I really enjoy, and I feel it's underutilized by most players. A good scout can swing a game, but most die before they can have much of an impact. It's a different play style that requires patience, restraint, and a devious nature to be successful. So in this video, we're going to cover the basics, some tips for having a successful game, as well as some tricks to help you keep that map lit up long enough to make a difference. Let's start with the basics for any new players. Here's Scouting 101. Scouting is an ability common to all light tanks ranked 2 and above, as well as a few other specific vehicles. The mechanic works as follows. Target any enemy ground vehicle with either the gunner sight or the commander's binoculars. Hit the scout button. This is V by default. If you do it right, that enemy will now have a red eyeball over his tank that's visible to all your teammates, as well as being marked on the mini-map, and you'll earn some pocket change in a few points. If you do it wrong, you'll get a 45 second cooldown. Now there is another way to scout using third person free look, and since you'll see me do this a lot in the footage, let's go over it now. Everybody knows about the bino shot, where you use your binocular view to aim your cannon, then switch to gunner's view to fire. Well you can scout in a similar way. Use your third person view to aim your binoculars, then switch to commander's view and hit scout. This takes a bit of practice, but comes in super handy. This allows you to scout from cover, fully hauled down, to scout over hilltops and ridgelines while staying well down slope to scout through obstacles with ease and accuracy, but most of all to snap off the scout quickly. So what's the big deal? You mark an enemy, right? Well, that's the easy part. If you want to actually get paid enough to be worth your troubles, you need a teammate to kill your target before your scout expires. Scout lasts 45 seconds, by the way. When this happens, you'll get the intelligence award, be credited with the assist, get more silver lions and more points, and the spawn cost of your airplanes will be reduced by 7%. If your tank has the airstrike mod equipped, that doubles to 14. Seriously, two intelligence can get you in a plane without ever exposing yourself to fire, and with some practice you can be the first air spawn more often than not, if that's your thing. If not, it's still a great way to help your team, and for new players, it's a way to get some points and silver lines without brawling. Playing as a scout gives them a way to stay alive long enough to learn. Now there's a lot of really good scout tanks out there, but my personal favorite is the ASU-57. To my mind, it's a perfect dedicated scout vehicle. On paper, there's not much to turn your head. 55 horsepower at 3.3 tons makes it roughly twice as fast as your average riding lawnmower with nearly the same amount of armor. Technically, you can bounce light machine guns, but don't count on it. The 57mm is the first gun the Russians get that will reliably punch a hole through 100mm of armor at any reasonable distance and angle, but it has less explosive filler than a microwave pizza roll, so you've got to place your shots well. No machine gun, no roof, no stereo. It is the pinnacle of Soviet design philosophy that better is the enemy of good enough. And it is good enough. Because what it does have going for it is its size. It's tiny and oddly shaped, and when used correctly, it's damn close to invisible. This is why it's known as Stalin's lawnmower, the dumpster of death, or most commonly that got mother ASU. And that's the angle you work, see? Most maps are full of tiny dips and folds in a terrain that would never hide a normal tank, but an ASU can just disappear in. Seriously, you can go hole down behind a speed bump in this thing and its general spongebob shape is surprisingly easy to overlook. Slap on more bush than a 70s porn star, and you can blend in so damn well the enemy team runs you over before they notice you. No, seriously, it happens, and it's a problem. So just to be clear for you new guys, while what we're about to cover applies to any scout tank, the footage will include some spots where a Hellcat simply won't survive. So let's go over some basic tips to have a good scout game. Here it is, Flanky's 10 Commandments of Scouting. <laughs> Number one, have a plan. Know the spot you're going to and exactly how you're going to get there. Clear the spawn without becoming a soccer ball for the rest of your team. Stick to the low ground where you can. Push hard and fast for your first spot. The important part is getting there alive. Number two, plant your flag. When you get to your spot, go haul down and turn off your engine. Listen for enemy flankers. Take a good look around and make sure no one is going to ruin your fun. If you're all alone, then it's time to set up shop. If not, you must deal with the trespassers. This is your spot. No trespassing, no witnesses. I don't leave no witnesses. Get down! Shut up! Number three, disappear. Movement and noise attract attention, so stay hauled down. Limit your movement as much as you can and keep the engine off when you're not using it. Become one with nature. Stealth is your real armor, so embrace your inner sneaky bastard. 
Number four, observe and report. Get to work marking targets. Start with any flankers that are a threat to you. Target these and call them out on a minimap. Your team might bag them for you, or at least distract them so you can. Next, tag the vanguard of the enemy push so your team knows when to expect contact. Just work your way down the line unless you see something extra dangerous your team needs to be aware of. Go ahead and mark that on the map as well. Number five, keep it in the holster. Seriously, don't shoot unless you have no choice for the first push of the game. This is the hardest part, really, is you're going to see some beautiful shots just begging you to take them. Don't. You'll have plenty of chances later, trust me. This is why most scouts don't last long enough to be effective. Ask yourself how many times you spotted someone you hadn't noticed, only because they shot. Best case, you wound a guy and he doesn't know where it came from. Or worse, you ammo rack him in a kill cam shows him right where you are. Game over, man. If you take the shot, you lose your spot. That's your mantra for the first push of the game. I've got so a brand you... new mantra. Number six, learn to juggle. The map says that if a scout lasts 45 seconds and you can mark a target every five, you can keep up the nine enemies tagged. Not that that ever happens, but six is totally doable. Try to keep track of the order you've tagged them in. Keep an eye on your oldest tag, and when you see that eye go away or you see him disappear off the minimap, refresh that scout. After a while, you'll develop a sense of timing. Number seven, be a real scout. What I mean by that is don't hesitate to communicate. Don't fixate on any one target. Stay in third person as much as possible and pay attention to how the battle plays out. If there's someone pushing in the danger or a sniper your team isn't paying enough attention to, go ahead and mark them normally on the minimap, even if they're scouted. Don't be afraid to use the chat. Keep an eye on your team's air spawn and be ready to mark targets for their bombs. Mark open tops and ask for artillery or strafing runs. There's all kinds of damage you can do for your team without ever firing a shot. Number eight, provide overwatch. Sometimes you've got to go active. So while you're just sitting there and you've got a few seconds, put that rangefinder to work. Make a quick middle range card of your area by pre-ranging likely spots, dead enemies, hilltops, etc. You can do this as you're scouting enemies and you might as well. That way you're ready when it's time to act. And remember, you're not a brawler, you're a backstabbing thief. So have your sight preset, pop up, take the sure shot, and get right back into cover. Do not engage in a prolonged gunnery duel. One, maybe two shots, then go quiet again. Number nine, anticipate the hate. Revenge killing is just meta in this game, and when you dunk on somebody with a meme tank, you can bet your paycheck they're coming back to kill you. Note the name of your victim and check the stat screen after a kill. Their kill death should give you a good idea if you should be watching the sky or the ground. Either way, you'd be wise to relocate. Make a quick dash, I like to move toward their spawn myself, and either hide under cover or set up an ambush depending. By the way, if you kill that same guy again and he can still respawn, be ready. You know he's on a mission to regain some pride. Number 10. Cashing out. By this point in the game, the battle has swung one way or the other. If your team is pushing, be ready to move up to a new position. Same as before, stick to the low ground and find a good spot to support from. You'll see lots of single unsupported targets. Feel free to clap these guys. Or the flip side, your team got smoked and the battle is past your position. This works just as well. Hit them from behind or camp their ant trail for some easy kills. Either way, you can get a bit reckless now having more spawn points than you can use. It's time for a late game rampage. Well guys, that covers how I play a scout. Here are the few more tips in no particular order. Don't be afraid to scout on the move. The game gives you a bit of a buff to your aim when your vehicle is in motion. The horizontal aim is much more important than the vertical aim, so don't sweat the bouncing. You can scout through most objects, including terrain. You can tag someone even if the line of sight is blocked, as long as you know where they are. You can combine these two mechanics to blind scout someone who's close to you most times. Just roll forward or back a touch while you use your third person trick, and you've got a decent chance of tagging them. Use their engine noise to help you pinpoint their location. Sometimes you need to shape the battlefield to your advantage to get that intelligence award. If the situation is right, I'll take a shot to disable an enemy. I mean, why not track that heavy while he's in the open, if you can get away with it? A hit marker isn't a kill cam after all. Camo is important. Don't be the only green thing on the map. At a minimum, you need snow and desert camo. Snow camo also works well in urban maps or against rocks. Desert camo works well in a surprising amount of places. Seriously, try it. Sometimes concealment is better than cover. The human eye tends to see what it expects to see, and there are tons of cheeky scout spots out there if you're sneaky enough and have the nerve to try. It's oddly satisfying to hide right under the nose of the enemy team. Any map is a scout map. Seriously, where there's a will, there's a way. Berlin, for example, is a great map for racking up intelligence awards. One of my favorite plays is to rush to ACAP on a abandoned factory, score three quick intelligence through a window, and spawn a PE-8. It's a very reliable play. Here's another freebie. Snow camo, 
flower beds campaign yet. That's all I'm going to say. Get creative. Think outside the box. Stay away from idiots. I can't count the number of times some yahoos pulled right up next to me and started spamming coax and main gun as fast as they can load. Move immediately. It sucks, but losing your spot is better than dying. Also, just because some nitwit gets caught out in a bad situation in no way obligates you to die for them. It's a hard choice, but most of the time it's better to let nature take its course. On the flip side, sometimes you've got to take a risk for the team. One well-placed shot can often make a real difference. Just make sure it's worth giving away your position. Ever see this thing? This is a squad target marker, and like the name implies, only squad mates can see it. This is one handy tool. You can drop one of these in any view, so you can use it to mark a spot from your binos and then switch to third person without losing track of where you were. You can also use it to tag a terrain feature and see that spot on your minimap. There are a hundred uses for this guy, so if you don't have it set up, go to Controls, Common, Set Target for Squad, and assign it a key that's easy to get at. If you don't know a map, or you just don't know a good place to go on a map, after the game go back and watch the replay. Use your free camera to gain a top-down view from a good height and turn on the player tags if they aren't already. Spin your perspective until it matches what you see on the mini-map. Watch the replay sped up and you'll get a good idea of the traffic patterns. Note where the action happens and where the ant trails are. Now pause and use the free camera to move around the map and find some spots that overlook these. That's where you want to go. And lastly, don't forget you're part of a team. I know I laid out a pretty conservative playstyle earlier, but sometimes you've got to break the rules for the greater good. If you're doing the scout thing right, that is providing overwatch for your team, you'll have all the information you need to make the right choices. If you need to act, act. Just don't look for an excuse to start blasting if you still want to stick around the scout. All these crazy situations you see, you don't have to go looking for them. They'll find you.